Hi everyone, uh, myself Dr. Kumar Gaurav and the topic for today is the Gradinigo syndrome. So what is basically the Gradinigo syndrome? It is characterized by the triad of the superative otitis media. Here you can see, discharging here the superative otitis media, pain in the distribution of the trisaminal nerve. Here you can see, you will get the retroorbital pain, the pain in the distribution of the trisaminal nerve and the abducent nerve palsy. So patient will be having diplopia. And these uh, palsy may give rise to the potentially fatal complications. So the knowledge of the etiology and the appropriate investigations can lead to the early diagnosis of the Gradinigo syndrome. So you, there's a mnemonic where you can remember, this is a petrocytis tri, the Gradinigo syndrome by G. Rad. So for G. Rad means R means retroorbital pain, A is abducent of palsy, and D is the discharge. So, this is Giusep Gradinigo. So, he defined it in 1907 as a symptom complex of the superative otitis media, pain in the distribution of the trisaminal nerve and the abducent nerve palsy. Since the advent of the antibiotics, the incidence of this potentially fatal conditions has diminished, but occasional cases still occur. So what is the diagnostic criteria for the Gradinigo syndrome? First is the superative otitis media, pain in the distribution of the trisaminal nerve, like the retroorbital pain, and the abuse and nerve palsy, you will get the diplopia in the patient. Etiology of the Gradinigo syndrome. Well, there is the apical petrocytis, Petrosis secondary to the superative otitis media, there is the extra dural inflammation of the petrous apex involving the trisaminal ganglion and the abducent nerve. Well, what are the possible sequelae of the Gradinigo syndrome? It is the when it's like intradural uh, connection, then the meningitis, intracranial abscess spread to the skull base, and uh, involvement of the 9th, 10th, and uh, 11th cranial nerves, which is called the Wernet syndrome. The pre-vertebral parapharyngeal abscesses spread to the sympathetic plexus around the carotid sheath. So what are the investigations? Well, the investigation take the form of the imaging the petrous uh, temporal bone using the uh, different modalities. The computer tomography will show the evidence of the petromastoid air cell opacifications, possibly the bone destruction, and in is particularly helpful in diagnosing the evidence of the intracranial abscess formation. Well, the magnetic resonance imaging has been demonstrated to show the inflammatory changes in the pectoral abscess. The radioisotope bone scan show the increased uptake in the pectoral apex and hence aids localization of the disease process. So certain groups of the patients are more susceptible to developing these conditions. And these may include like diabetics, those with a high dose of the steroids, and immunosuppressed patients, including the course of those in AIDS, and all these therefore need to be investigated for. So what are the treatment basically? The awareness of the conditions coupled with the prompt investigations is required for the early recognition. High dose antibiotics treatment, both systemic and topical, is the treatment of choice. And this should be extended for a long period, even if the patient appears to respond adequately or to a short resume. If the disease is recognized in the later stage, then a surgical drainage in, is in the form of the apical petrosectomy may be necessary. Thank you guys. Do subscribe my channel for more videos.